All right, so today we've, we've taken some of our initial um, equations for rotational motion, um, looking at angular velocity, angular acceleration. Um, we've looked at those a little bit simply. Now we're going to put them into our kinematics equations. Okay, so our kinematics equations are coming back here, but we're going to connect them basically with our translational kinematics equations. So these are new, okay? Uh, this side is new. This side should look very familiar. Okay, hopefully it does. This side is what you're going to want to write down on your equation sheet um, and in your notes or one or the other. These ones are, you should know these. These are old, right? Regu these are regular kinematics. This is the exact same set of equations Instead of except regular velocity, here's angular velocity final, angular velocity initial, angular acceleration times time. Okay, so everything here is just being put into terms of the rotational motion aspects rather than the translational. Okay, so pretty simple switch. Remind me again what theta will be measured in. Radians. Radians. Okay, so if we're solving for the number of revolutions, that means we need to solve for radians first and then convert it to revolutions. That'll be pretty common um, in this chapter. Okay, solving for revolutions. Um, do we usually have an initial um, angular displacement, right, an initial theta? Not really, right? When we solve for delta theta, it's usually just going to be final minus zero, right? We don't start at four radians or two radians or whatever. Okay. We need our calculator out if we don't have that out already. Do we have our equations all copied down? Okay. Okay, soccer ball has a radius of 9.8 centimeters. The first thing that we should do there is put it into meters. Good, so 0 0.098 meters. Okay, it's rolling across the ground with a rotational speed of 14 radians per second, so that's going to be omega initial or omega final. Initial. Okay. It says it slows down at a rate of 2.4 radians per second squared. What variable would that be? Yep. Alpha. And is it going to be positive 2.4 or negative 2.4? Negative. How do we know that it's going to be a negative 2.4? It's slowing down. It's moving in the positive direction but slowing down, so that's a negative 2.4 radians per second squared. How far will it roll before it comes to a stop? Okay, so that means overall, what are we solving for here? What angular motion variable are we going to be solving for? What'd you say? We're going to solve for distance, okay, which is really L. Okay, so we have a couple different variables here that we need to pay attention to. Okay, but our equation for L is theta times r. Okay, do we have either of those variables? We have r, but we don't have theta. Okay, so we need to solve for how many radians does it spin through during that time when it's coming to a stop. That'll be a, allowing us to come back and solve for um, what's the total distance it travels. So we have to find out how many radians did it spin through while it was slowing down. Okay, so what angular motion equation should we use for that? The third one, right? Because we don't have time. We don't know how long it's going to take. Okay, and it comes to a stop, so what do we know about its final angular velocity? It's zero. Good. 
So we'd go 0 squared equals 14 squared plus 2 times negative 2.4 times delta theta. These are omega initial and omega final. This one was given to us right here. That's right. This is angular acceleration. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's radians per second squared. Okay. So 14 squared, I'm going to move that to the other side, which gives us negative 196 equals negative 4.8 times delta theta. Okay, so that means delta theta comes out to be about 40.8 radians, yes? Okay, but that's not our final answer. We want to find out how far will it roll. So we want to find out its total distance rolled. So here's our radians. We know that our radius is 0 0.098. So I'm going to solve for distance equals theta times the radius. Okay, any questions there? It rolled a total distance of four meters. If we wanted to find out how many revolutions it went through before it came to a stop, how would we go about doing that? Any ideas? We would divide what? Right, we'd go with our number of radians here, and we convert radians to revolutions. Okay? So one revolution is 2 pi radians. If we wanted to find out how many revolutions, how many times did it roll over before it came to stop, that's how we'd go about that. All right. Drill starts from rest and accelerates to a final angular velocity of 25,100 RPMs over a period of 3.2 seconds. What's our angular acceleration here? Something hopefully here should jump out at us in terms of units. Okay, so let's go ahead and convert here 25,100 RPMs. Revolutions per minute. Okay, we end up coming out with around 10 to 11 percent of what we originally started with in RPMs. Okay, so is that our initial angular velocity or our final? That is our final, 26, 28.5. What's our initial omega there? Zero. Zero. Good. And our time is 3.2. How do we go about solving for angular acceleration here? First equation, right? The easy one.
Could you use the uh, regular uh, angular acceleration one for this one? Such as, oh, delta omega over t? Yeah, yeah same exact thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, same exact equation. Those two equations are literally the same thing, just rearranged and pulled t up top. Mm -hmm. Good question. Okay, um, any questions there? Do we all agree, 821.4? The last question asks for what's the angle through which the drill has rotated? Okay, we still want this in radians, and a radian is still a, an angle, right? We usually measure angled in degrees, but an, a radian is still an angle. It's just a bigger chunk of the circle than one degree is. Okay, so we still want this in radians. How do we go about solving for theta here? Does it matter which equation we use? No, because we've got every variable that we need. Okay, so use either the second or the third equation there to go ahead and solve for theta. If you have that, I want you to go ahead and solve for a number of revolutions. How many revolutions does it take to get to that point? Divide by 2, divide by pi, or divide by parentheses 2 pi? Okay, did we get about 4,200 radians? Yes. Okay, and then we put that into revolutions and we get 669 or 670, 669 and a third. Okay. Questions here? How do you get revolutions? To, get, to go from radians to revolutions, we would divide by 2 pi. Divide by 2 pi, because 1 revolution equals 2 pi radians. All right, let's try this last one on your own. Last one here on your own.
All right. Um, I solved for my final angular velocity here, which was 31.42. That then becomes my initial velocity over here because it comes to this point, 31.42 meters per second. We unplug it. That's the second portion of our motion. So now that becomes our initial velocity here. I had to solve for alpha in both cases, so I solved for my acceleration in both cases, and then I plugged in to solve for theta in both cases, so I can find out how many radians did it spin through. After that point, I converted that from radians to revolutions, and I added them together because it wanted the total revolutions through that two-part um, time period. Okay, questions? Is that short enough? All right.